So in this video, I'm going to discuss the question in uh, thermal and statistical mechanics, which appeared in GATE 2019 examination. So let's continue with the first numerical problem. The statement is: At temperature T in Kelvin, the value of the Fermi function at energy 0.5 electron volt. So uh, above the Fermi energy. So that means we are given uh, energy of E minus E F that is given to be 0.5 electron volt. And it's given that for this value of the uh, energy E, the value of the Fermi direct probability distribution function f of E, that is equal to 0.01. Okay. Then the temperature to the nearest integer is so value of the kb that's also given to us the kb, and that is equal to 8.62 into 10 power minus 5 electron volt per Kelvin. Okay. So now uh, let's first write the expression for the Fermi direct probability distribution function that's Fe that is equal to 1 upon 1 plus exponential E minus Ef upon kvt okay and this is given to be equal to 0 0.01 okay so now that means 1 upon 1 plus E minus EF that is equal to 0 0.5 electron volt that's given to us 1 plus exponential 0 0.5 electron volt divided by KB and then T okay so from here uh, and that that is equal to 0 0.01 okay after doing the cross multiplication what we obtain is 1 plus exponential 0 0.5 EB upon kbt that is equal to uh, 1 upon 0 0.01 and that is equal to 100 so that means exponential 0 0.5 electron volt upon kbt that is equal to 100 minus 1 that will be equal to 99 or 0 0.5 eb upon now uh, K KB KVT let me write KVT again and that is equal to ln 99 and from here we obtain that the temperature is equal to 0 0.5 it's again in electron volt so that means again um, here we have to make use of the value of KV in electron volt that's given to us okay so divided by KB which is 8.62 into 10 power minus 5 electron volt per Kelvin and then multi uh, temperature we have taken already on the left hand side and then multiply by ln 99 and this after uh, doing the evaluation this number will come on to be equal to 1262.31 Kelvin or uh, this can be approximated to a temperature of 1262 Kelvin so that is our answer. So let's take a look at the next problem a large number of uh, number n of ideal boson each of mass m are trapped in a three dimensional potential which is given by vr that is equal to m omega square r square by 2 it's a three dimensional potential the bosonic system is kept at temperature t which is much lower than the bose einstein condensation temperature tc the chemical potential satisfies the relationship okay so let's try to understand this problem so uh, because the boson they are kept in a three dimensional potential so the ground state energy uh, uh, for such a system that's confined to a, a three dimensional potential is given by uh, at absolute zero i'm talking about okay so so that ground state energy e0 that is equal to 3 by 2 h cut omega okay so let's say uh, that, that's a result one okay uh, equation one okay so at absolute zero we notice that all the atoms they will be at the lowest energy states so at t is equal to zero all atoms will be in lowest energy state okay so that's what we expect from a system okay now here e0 that's the ground state energy uh, of uh, mean ground state energy of the system now at any temperature i mean at any temperature the average number of atoms in this state is given by okay uh, the average number of atoms 
एवरेज नंबर ऑफ एटम्स इन अ स्टेट विद एनर्जी ई जीरो दे आर गिवन बाय एन जीरो दैट इज इक्वल टू बिकॉज इट दे आर द बोजोनिक पार्टिकल सो द नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल दैट इज ई वन अपॉन एक्सपोनेंशियल ई माइनस म्यू द एनर्जी वी टॉक दैट्स ई जीरो ई जीरो माइनस म्यू अपॉन के बी टी एंड माइनस वन ओके दैट्स बोस एंड सेंट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन ओके सो द नंबर ऑफ एटम्स एट एनी टेम्परेचर अदर देन एब्सोल्यूट जीरो बिकॉज एट एब्सोल्यूट जीरो ऑल द एटम्स विल बी इन द ग्राउंड स्टेट दैट्स वॉट वी हाउ वी ट्रीट द मीन द सिस्टम एट एब्सोल्यूट जीरो ओके वेन टी इज सफिशेंटली लो सो दैट मीन्स वेन T is sufficiently low. The corresponding number n zero that will be very large. Okay, so that means uh, when n zero is ve very large, so that means the denominator in this equation it uh, it shall be very small. So when uh, t is very small so n0 for n0 to be large the denominator for n0 for n0 to be very large the denominator denominator shall denominator in equation 2 denominator in equation 2 Shall be very small, so we will make use of this result. Okay, so this implies that the exponential factor. Okay, it's it it's small, so that means so this implies the exponential factor that is exponential e zero minus mu upon k t. Uh, this is approximately close to one. So only then the uh, the denominator here in this equation is going to be very small. Okay, when this exponential factor is uh, almost close to unity. Okay, so so that means uh, we we can expand the denominator as so so that the n n zero turns out to be equal to when the exp this is very small. So that means we can expand the exponential factor as by retaining only the first term one plus e zero minus mu. Upon k t and neglecting the higher higher order term minus one, okay. So one and one they will cancel with each other. So this is approximately equal to k v t upon e zero minus mu, okay. Because n zero it's much much greater than unity, okay. Now when t is equal to zero, from here we notice that when t is equal to zero. okay so that means uh, th this implies from the, uh, from this result we conclude that when t is equal to 0 so e 0 that is equal to mu okay so this is because uh, when t we take t is equal to 0 so that mean uh, what we can do is uh, n 0 into e 0 minus mu that is equal to 0 so from here we conclude that e 0 that is equal to mu but when t it's not equal to 0 okay so that's only possible that Uh, mu is smaller than e zero. So when uh, t is not not equal to zero, so the uh, and e zero uh, sorry e zero it's it's slightly larger than mu. So th that makes uh, this n zero value uh, to be uh, to be very large. So this means when uh, temperature is not equal to zero, mu it's uh, smaller than e zero. So this ensures that. mu is slightly smaller than e0 so it's slightly smaller than uh, e0 so th that ensure that kty e0 minus mu it's a, it's a large number such so, so this mean in this condition uh, all atoms they will be in the ground states all atoms will be in ground state 
okay so that means uh, mu it's uh, smaller than e0 now what is e0 so that means mu uh, mu that is smaller than So, uh, I mean, the point is that hence uh, it's given that the system it is below the Bose-Einstein condensation temperature. So, below the Bose-Einstein uh, condensation temperature. So, what we can expect is that it's mu the chemical potential is less than or equal to the, uh, to E zero, which is equal to three by two h cut omega. Okay. So, therefore, we conclude that option A is the correct one here. So he, here, uh, I just want to add the uh, just uh, one more point related to the uh, equation. Uh, this e equation three here, because at any non-zero temperature. So let me just uh, quickly explain this because it uh, it's really important point to note that n zero. We conclude, concluded that n zero n zero that is equal to approximately equal to k b t k. It's a Boltzmann constant here. E zero minus mu. Okay, so that at any non-zero temperature, so when T it's not equal to zero, but for temperature smaller than Bose uh, Einstein condensation temperature, which we call as Tc. Okay, that that so it's a non-zero value of the temperature, but lower than uh, sufficiently lower than the Bose Einstein condensation temperature. Okay, the point is that N zero it should be should be very large. Okay, so in order to make N zero very large at non-zero temperature, so this value, okay, so the value of uh, this value should be as small as possible, as small as possible. Okay, so the only option that's left with us is that because T it's going to non-zero value, so the, the only option in the denominator that we can have, it's only when when E zero, it is very slightly greater than the value of the chemical potential or other way around uh, to put the same thing other way around mu should be slightly smaller than e0 okay in case of equality which is valid at absolute zero okay so here the, again the n0 it's well this uh, n0 will be a very large value so in that particular case all the atoms they are going to be in the definitely in the ground state okay so that means for non-zero temperature the condition is that mu uh, for at uh, t not equal to zero and the second condition that n0 is uh, finite okay so this ensures that mu it's smaller than uh, e naught and uh, at absolute zero the equality will be valid so okay so therefore the essential condition is that mu should be smaller than 3 by 2 h cut omega so now this complete the discussion on the uh, this question So let's take a look at the next problem. The statement is consider two systems A and B, each having two distinguishable particles. Okay, so we are having two systems with uh, n is equal to two distinguishable particle. Distinguishable particles. Okay. In both system, the each particle can exist in states with energy 0, 1, 2, 3 units with equal probability. The total energy of the combined system is 5 units. Okay, so we are given that. Uh, let's label the system as A and B, and it's given that uh, the EA plus EV that is equal to 5 units. Okay, assuming that system A has 3 uh, energy units, it's given that. E A that is equal to three units and system B has two units of energy. Okay, such that E A plus E V that is equal to five units. So this constraint has to be satisfied by the system all the time. Okay, now uh, okay. So the entropy of the system is K V lambda. Okay, so for this system the entropy that is equal to K B ln lambda. So we have to find what is lambda equal to. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so uh, I'm going to draw the I mean the the different uh, I mean uh, different energy configuration for the system A such that the total energy associated with system A is three units. Okay, because uh, the system can have four different energy levels uh, with available energy as uh, zero, one, two, and three. So these are the energy of these four different levels. Okay, so now uh, we have to 
put two distinguishable particle in this in the system A such that the total energy is always three units. Okay, so let me draw a few more uh, configuration. So this way. So this is uh, this description. It's for the system A. I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, so we have to keep the total energy of the system A equal to uh, three. So let, let's place first particle here, and then to make that uh, energy of the system A equal to three, so I have to put the second particle here. And now because the particles are distinguishable, so I can interchange the particle. So this is going to give us another microstate. Okay. Now the another option is that to put for, uh, one particle in energy state with energy equal to one unit, and the second particle here, and then interchange the particles okay so this way for system a a we are having the total energy here it's 3 3 3 and 3 so here omega a the number of microstates per system a they are equal to 4 okay so let's call this as result 1 or the equation 1 now let's uh, come to system b Again, system B, it's uh, having four different levels, but now the uh, no, the energy that is associated with system B, that's two units only, okay? This system is also having four different energy levels with energy values uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3, but now we are having only two particles here, two distinguishable particles, okay? So let's see how we can distribute them. So, okay? Uh, n is equal to 2 and e b that is equal to 2 units okay so let, let's put the first particle here and then uh, second particle we can put here okay now interchange the particle b here and a here so th these are the two different microstates now it's also possible that we can put both of the particle here so that the total energy is always 2 so here for this system omega b that's the number of microstates associated with the system b they are equal to 3 here okay because the distribution of the particle in various energy state in system a it's completely independent from the distribution of particle in system b so therefore the total number of microstates for the composite system omega total that is equal to omega a into omega v and that is equal to 4 multiplied by 3 that is equal to 12. So this uh, this is the total number of microstates for the composite system subjected to the constraint that the total energy Ea plus Ev that is always 5 units. Okay. Now the ent corresponding entropy will be S is equal to Kb ln omega total and that is equal to Kb ln 12. Okay. So therefore lambda is equal to 12 here. So that's our answer. So let's continue with the next problem. So we are given a uh, uh, statement where uh, in a thermally insulated container, 0 0.01 kilogram of ice at 273 Kelvin is mixed with 0 0.1 kg of water at 300 Kelvin. So let's first write the parameters which are given to us. So here, uh, mass mass of ice that is equal to 0 0.0 1 kg and the corresponding temperature is T ice that is equal to 273 Kelvin okay uh, and uh, okay the, the, uh, I think it's a incomplete statement there should be another information that is latent heat of fusion of the ice so that can be written as 335 kilojoule per kg and the another information that's the uh, the heat specific heat of water so i am writing it here cw and that is equal to 4.2 kilojoule per kg per kelvin okay and here uh, lf that is equal to 335 kilojoule per kg and for the water it is mw that is equal to 0 0.1 kg and the corresponding temperature of the water is 300 kelvin okay and uh, the heat capacity specific heat sorry not heat capacity it's a specific heat 4.2 kilojoule per kg per kelvin so this is given to us okay now 
Neglecting the specific heat of the container, the change in entropy of the system in Joule Kelvin on attaining the thermal equilibrium is how much? Okay, so one we must understand that uh, uh, first of all uh, we have to uh, find the final temperature for this composite system. Okay, because uh, we are given that ice this is at absolute zero. So first of all we need to convert ice. Uh, so we are having a piece of ice which is at 0 degree Celsius okay or you can say 273 Kelvin okay so first of all this ice will be converted into water whose temperature will be 0 degree Celsius so ice to water conversion but the temperature will be still 0 degree Celsius so here the energy that is required that is equal to mass of ice okay m i am writing here and multiply by the latent heat of fusion but remember that this process will take place at t is equal to 0 degree celsius the temperature will not change or t is equal to 0 degree celsius or equal to 273 kelvin okay the heat will be added to the ice but the temperature will not change okay now let's say that uh, when it's mi it's mixed with the water at 300 kelvin let's say the final temperature is t okay so, so the correspondingly when ice uh, the I mean, water at 0 degree Celsius it is again it will be a water but now at a new temperature T okay such that the heat which is required to raise the temperature of the water from 0 degree Celsius to T that is equal to mass of the ice multiply by the now water it's converted into water the specific heat of water and then uh, correspondingly the delta uh, the delta T because temperature is changing from 0 degree Celsius to T, t uh, or you can say if it is in Kelvin so then Delta T but the difference will be same in both cases whether it's in Celsius or Kelvin okay so T is the final temperature so here uh, so this way ice has gained uh, heat during uh, I mean uh, while it's convert when it's converted from ice to water at 0 degree Celsius and then its temperature is raised from 0 to T okay so therefore the entropy change for the ice will involve two steps okay uh, similarly for the other system that's a water at 300 Kelvin uh, when it's mixed with the ice uh, ice at 0 degree Celsius the for the case of water at 300 Kelvin it will lose energy okay so that means we will apply here the energy balance equation and then try to determine the corresponding final temperature of the system first okay so uh, let's see how we can do this okay so I am writing the energy balance equation so m ice multiply by latent heat of fusion so this is this energy for converting ice at 0 degree Celsius to water at 0 degree Celsius okay m i into L f plus now it's m ice the mass is same although it's converted into water at 0 degree Celsius but mass is same okay and then the now the specific heat of water and then uh, the corresponding change in temperature so that is T minus 273 so 273 means this temperature so T minus 273 so now, now this is this energy okay and this is equal to what this is equal to the heat lost by the water which was earlier at 300 Kelvin so now let's assume that for the water at 300 Kelvin the uh, the new temperature is the final temperature is T okay so that the heat lost by that water that is equal to mass of the water specific heat of water multiply by the temp uh, temperature difference so that is uh, here I will write 300 minus T so because we are simply comparing the energy so uh, we will uh, keep it positive quantity okay now we have to simply plug in the values of the parameter and then we will determine what is the value of T here that's the final temperature of the mixture ice water mixture okay so M ice that is 0 0.01 kg then the value of LF that is 335 into 10 power 3 that's in kilojoule so we will convert it into joule plus mass of the ice again 0 0.01 0 0.01 and then multiply by the specific heat of water that is 4.2 into 10 power 3 into T minus 273 okay and that is equal to mass of the water which is 0 0.1 kg multiply by specific heat of water that is 4.2 into 10 power 3 multiply by the temperature difference 300 minus T now uh, after solving it what we will obtain is I am writing this result directly so we have to simply solve this equation nothing else it's not uh, that difficult okay minus 11 4 double 6 
that is equal to 12 6 minus 420 t so after solving this equation be obtained 462 t that is equal to 134 double 16 which implies t is equal to 134116 divided by 462 and that is equal to 290.29 kelvin so that's the final temperature of the mixture okay but uh, the problem is not yet com complete okay so now we have to determine the net entropy change for the system so the net entropy change that is equal to the entropy change for the ice plus entropy change for the water which was initially at 300 uh, kelvin okay so let me call this as uh, let's call this as equation 1 this as 2 so now let's first find find out what is delta s ice entropy change for the ice so because it also involved two steps okay so that that is equal to m ice into lf first it's the melting of the ice at uh, absolute zero t ice okay and then heating the uh, the water at zero degree celsius to the final temperature the mass of water is same as the mass of ice multiplied by the specific heat of water and then logarithmic of t final upon t initial that is t ice okay so now substituting the value of all these parameter so this is 0 0.01 and then latent heat of fusion that is 335 into 10 power 3 divided by t ice which is 273 kelvin plus m ice again 0 0.01 CW that's 4200 okay after the I mean converting it into joule and then logarithmic of T final which is 229 the temperature that uh, 290 sorry not 229 but 290.29 divided by the 273 okay and that is equal to 14.85 joule per kelvin okay that's the entropy change for the ice okay now uh, let's label this as equation 3 now what is the delta s water which has lost heat so that is equal to now this is going this will come out as a negative quantity the mass of water the specific heat and ln t final upon uh, t initial which is 300 kelvin okay so that is equal to the mass of water 0 0.1 kg specific heat of water CW that is 4200 and then ln 290.29 divided by 300 so this will come out to be minus 13.82 joule per kelvin okay so that net entropy change is equal to delta s ice plus delta s water equation 2 okay that is equal to 14.85 minus 13.82 and that is equal to 1.03 joule per kelvin so that is the answer here okay so let's take a look at the final uh, problem the statement is consider a one dimensional gas of n non interacting particles of mass m so it's a one dimensional gas of uh, this uh, n non interacting particle with the hamiltonian for the single particle that is given by so let me write the expression for the hamiltonian of the single particle h that is equal to p square by 2m plus 1 by 2 <coughs> m omega square into x square plus 2x okay the specific uh, the high temperature specific heat in units of r is equal to n kv is given by okay so let's first try to understand the uh, the hamiltonian okay so that is uh, this the hamiltonian can be rewritten as p square upon 2m plus 1 by 2 m omega square into x plus 1 square minus 
m omega square y2 okay so that's the uh, i mean the this that's exactly identical to the equation one okay now so we can uh, show that the average energy of the uh, single uh, single oscillator okay so that is equal to because here it's a the first square energy term so the average contribution to this uh, the total energy will be kvt by 2 so that's the result that we are uh, mean uh, we follow from the equipartition theorem okay now similarly this term will also contribute uh, kvt by 2 say half kt of uh, to the total energy okay now this is a constant term basically so this will remain as it is so the its contribution to the total energy will be minus m omega square by 2 per oscillator okay uh, or this can be rewritten as uh, this these two terms collectively they will give rise to energy of kvt and minus m omega square y2 and the, uh, i can rewrite this as kvt plus e naught where e naught is the that's the offset energy that's associated with the each individual single oscillator which is equal to minus m omega square y2 okay so that means the average energy it's exactly that of the uh, one dimensional harmonic oscillator that means the average energy is exactly that of 1d harmonic oscillator plus additional offset energy e0 that's the i'm calling this as the offset energy okay that is the offset energy so this way i can write the expression for the total energy of the n harmonic oscillator so if i call that as u so that is equal to n multiplied by the average energy of the one oscillator so that is equal to uh, 2 uh, sorry not 2 but n kvt because they are independent so we can simply add on this term plus n times e0 okay so where this term it's independent of t independent of t okay so that means the correspondingly the heat capacity will be du by dt at constant volume and that is nothing but that is equal to n times kv okay so therefore uh, that is equal to r so in terms of r this therefore the uh, multiply coefficient that is 1 so therefore a is the correct answer here okay so that completes the solution for the gate to, uh, 2019